Hello everyone, this is your host from Galactic Update. Today I will share everything I know about the Great Kingdom of Atlantis. All information in the following video originate from a book called Discover Atlantis, co-authored by Diana Cooper and Sharon Hutton. Keep watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. In Golden Atlantis, for 1500 years, the spiritual energy on Earth was the highest it has ever been. It was a time of heaven on Earth, when everyone had incredible spiritual power. Atlantis became the longest and greatest civilization on Earth, and lasted from 250,000 years before Christ to 10,000 years before Christ. Atlantis was a landmass between Europe and America, which is now submerged beneath the Atlantic Ocean. For 240,000 years, this continent was the subject of a divine experiment to see if people could live in a physical body and still keep their connection with the creator of light. Throughout this long period, tests were set up in a number of different ways, but each time they were terminated as it became clear that humans with free will moved deeper into matter and self-destruction and further from their source. When the conditions were reset for the fifth and last time, Golden Atlantis emerged. And for a period of 1500 years, the people maintained their purity and oneness with their creator and enjoyed awesome spiritual, psychic and technological powers. Those who incarnated into Atlantis were genetically encoded to be tall and well-built with blonde hair and blue eyes. But Atlantis was only one of several experiments taking place on Earth. In diverse parts of the planet, various races with different genetic coding had other tasks to fulfill. Almost everyone on Earth has had an incarnation in Atlantis where great spiritual and technological knowledge was amassed beyond anything we can currently comprehend. The Intergalactic Council were the architects of Atlantis. They worked through 12 highly evolved souls, the high priests and priestesses, who took physical bodies that vibrated between the 5th and 6th dimensional frequency. They were collectively known as the Alta, and were the master builders who took all the practical earthly decisions about the setting up of the continent while taking general instruction from the council. The Intergalactic Council built the Temple of Poseidon during the Golden Age of Atlantis. The temple was created in the cradle of the Atlas Mountains and formed a seventh peak. These peaks symbolize the seven pillars of the universe, which are the seven spiritual laws or cosmic energies that govern humanity. These are the law of one, the law of karma, the law of manifestation, the law of grace, the law of responsibility, the law of unconditional love, and the law of intention. In the golden times, the inhabitants of Atlantis, including the priests, were home loving family-oriented people. Their houses were simple, round or oblong, and built in natural materials. Feng Shui or geomancy was practiced, and so everything was curved or rounded, which was believed to be more harmonious to the human spirit and a better channel for the energy of the universe. Each family had their own home, but work was communal and most people bathed together in open air pools and saunas in the warm climate. Almost all furniture and utensils were handmade and carved with love so that they radiated high vibrations into the atmosphere. They found it more satisfying to fashion their own creations. In the golden times every single object was produced with love and considered to be sacred. Atlanteans appreciated their gardens, which were beautiful and natural. Their surroundings were enriched with beautifully carved pieces of wood or special stones. Moving water played an important role in their well-being, and many had pools and fountains in their homes and gardens. They would spend time by them meditating 
and simply being relaxing to the sound and movement of water. The Atlanteans kept their frequency high by relaxing, enjoying their leisure and being sociable. They were light, fun-filled and happy people. Their pleasures were innocent. They picked berries together as a family and enjoyed walking alone or with others in nature. Atlanteans loved their homes and families as well as their animals, which were always part of the household and considered to be very important family members. Atlanteans loved to sing or chant together and to listen to music, to allow the vibrations to flow through their bodies. A concert would be dedicated to specific music, for instance, sacred chanting or uplifting chords. They built vast sound chambers with extraordinary acoustics, where concerts could be performed and people gathered for the social sound chambers within temples of healing. Creativity and art was valued and encouraged. Art exhibitions were very popular as artists wanted to spread the energy of their creations for people to experience. The people loved to keep their physical bodies fit and in due course challenge each other to races. This was always done for fun and to extend themselves. Competition was never undertaken from ego but was a medium for developing excellence. Eventually, one town would invite another to a match and each center would take turns to host these events, which were the forerunner of the Olympic Games as we know them today. Atlanteans learned that simplicity was one of the keys to keep their energy pure. Their daily life was spent in a combination of work, social and family life, contemplation, leisure and thanksgiving. Up to the decline of Atlantis, everyone was vegetarian, although they accepted the animal offerings, such as wool, milk, feathers or eggs. They believed that the eating of flesh would lower their frequency and shut down their psychic abilities, so their food was derived from plants, nuts, seeds, berries, eggs and dairy produce. Because their spiritual lives were aligned to the natural world, people respected and honored the rhythms and needs of nature. So the farmers planted and harvested appropriately for each type of plant according to the phases of the moon. The farmers placed companion plants together for their mutual support and protection and watched and listened to their plants telepathically receiving information from them. Atlanteans learn from the high priest Thoth that plants respond to certain types of music and so they sang and chanted to them using a harmonious, loving vibration to encourage their yield. It was also considered perfectly natural to sit amongst their vegetables and talk to them. This of course allowed a flow of prana or life force to be exchanged between humans and nature. Around the plants, the Atlanteans placed crystals that automatically vibrated with them, which helped them to grow and kept them healthy. Plants and vegetables were tended by specialist farmers, though the whole community automatically helped with harvesting. Everything was placed in storage, where families helped themselves freely to whatever they needed. Their diet was partly corn-based, but they grew to potatoes and all sorts of vegetables, nuts and fruits. Other specialists, who loved animals, cared for their cattle, sheep and other creatures. These farmers all worked together within the communities, supporting each other and enjoying their roles. They honored the animals and valued the food they offered. The Atlanteans loved trees. They would sit and lean against their trunks to restore their equilibrium and energy. And they also danced around them at ceremonies. In the golden times the soil was rich and fertile. The weather was clement and rainfall was perfect, controlled by the energy biodome that covered Atlantis. Plants, grown in tune with universal energies, were full of flavor and goodness. The high priest or priestesses who ruled the tribe spent some of their time in the temple of Poseidon and some in the community, 
where they were available for the inhabitants to consult. They were revered and loved as people of the highest integrity and honor. Every decision they made was for the highest good of the citizens, who knew this and respected their decisions. Furthermore, because the leaders were just, everyone accepted that the system was fair. It meant that there was a high level of trust between the governors and what would now be called their constitutions. Because of this, the people also devoted everything to the community. Every single individual joyfully supported and generously contributed to the whole. The atmosphere everywhere was peaceful. It was a time of laughter and happiness. The people loved to take part in rituals and ceremonies. And these sacred celebrations held the communities together. They knew that genuine gratitude from the heart is one of the most powerful of energies which literally moves the universe in response. So all spiritual devotion was based on thanksgiving. They focused on sending out a stream of thanks and continuously counted their blessings. And each time anyone did this, their aura lighted up and they drew more good things to them. Whenever there was a gathering, the participants would walk to the stone circles along a ley line, which enabled them to absorb the special magnetic energy through their feet. This raised their vibration and brought them into divine alignment for the ritual. The Temple of Poseidon formed one of the seven pillars of wisdom, representing the Law of One. It was the most powerful place in the whole of Atlantis. In the center of the cathedral was the most huge and awesome clear quartz crystal, the Great Crystal, which came from and was part of the Creator. It was pure source energy. In the golden years of Atlantis, the stellar gateway chakra was open in everyone, enabling them to access source. Of the twelve high priests or priestesses, six were connected to the energy that would later become Greece and in due course became Greek gods, and the remaining six were connected with the future Egypt and later were revered as Egyptian gods. Twelve high priests and priestesses were chosen for their ability to nurse and encourage people through the initial stages of a project. During the evolution of Atlantis, the council would change the leaders to bring in new energies and learning. At the pinnacle of the evolution, extremely high cosmic masters were initiated to take on the role of high priests and priestesses. Those who were there at the beginning and end of this phase of Atlantis were Thoth, Isis, Horus, Ra, Set and Imhotep. They were connected to Egypt, while Hermes, Zeus, Aphrodite, Apollo, Poseidon and Hera were linked to Greece. In the golden days of Atlantis, psychic gifts were highly regarded. They were never taken for granted and all latent abilities were honored, valued and developed. Everyone was psychic to some degree, but not everyone had a full range of abilities. For instance, one person would be more clairvoyant, while another might be extremely clairaudient or highly telepathic. The trained priests had all of the gifts to an extraordinary level. For 1500 years the people of Golden Atlantis focused on cooperation, gratitude and honoring all life forms. As a result, during the entire time they maintained inner peace, happiness and spiritual purity. This meant that only light angels with incredible vibrations equivalent to our current archangels entered the dome over Atlantis. Because everyone drew from the great pool of pure energy created by the high priests and priestesses, they were able to keep the frequency high and develop amazing psychic gifts. The Magi, especially, were highly trained, extraordinary skilled priests with powers beyond anything we can comprehend now. These powers were used in service to all. However, one day a mage realized he could use the great pool of his own personal benefit. For the first time, greed entered the consciousness of Atlantis 
and this allowed a dark angel to enter the continent. Soon the concept of personal gain and power spread and some of the Magi began to believe that they were better than other people. This state of ego created separation from the divine and attracted in more dark forces. From that moment, over a period of 8500 years, the experiment, which was the hope of the universes, developed until it became too evil to sustain. Atlantis divided into factions, many led by black magi. Some of the highly trained black magi used their vast occult power to frighten and control the people. The Intergalactic Council gave the people of Atlantis warning after warning. They were given many opportunities to change their ways, but they chose to continue with the profligate lifestyles and their gross misuse of power. At last, the use of technology and black magic to control the masses surrounded the Dark Ones with such a heavy, discordant vibration that the forces of light could no longer connect with them at all. They decided that the experiment had failed and must be terminated. Of course, a flood did not submerge the continent overnight. The final phase took several hundred years as places had to be prepared for the light ones of the twelve tribes to inhabit. At the fall of Atlantis, the original high priests and priestesses each led one of the tribes to its new location. Here, the refugees interbred with the local people and shared their knowledge and wisdom with them. This resulted in a huge advance in civilizations worldwide. The purpose of this merging of mighty ones with the populace was to enable more people to carry the wisdom of Atlantis in their genes. The twelve tribes eventually developed into the following cultures. High priest Thoth took his tribe to South America, where they became the Incas famed for their gold work. They were the priests and architects who built Machu Picchu and established the great two-way interdimensional portal there. High Priestess Isis came from the planet Venus and took her tribe to South America where they became the Aztecs, renowned for their magnificent art and their knowledge of the stars. The famous Aztec calendar began with the birth of Venus and calculations are based on advanced astronomical knowledge. The tribe of Horus became the Babylonians, merchants and tradesmen who taught people how to trade with integrity according to spiritual law. They were the craftspeople of the buildings and gardens and developed the hanging gardens of Babylon. Ra's tribe became the Egyptian culture which seeded the pharaohs and took it with much medical knowledge and information about all natural therapies. They took with them the Sphinx and the design of the pyramids. Set's tribe became the Inuit, who were shamans. They were connected with the element of water and had a symbiotic relationship with animals. They took with them many of the ancient stories and traditions. Imhotep was a mighty high priest of Atlantis and ruler of the tribe that took its wisdom to the west to form the Native American culture. The Cherokees were wise ones who carried the secrets of Atlantis. They brought their knowledge of shamanism and soul retrieval to the people as well as their special abilities to work with dreams using dream catchers. According to ancient Cherokee tradition, their ancestors came from the Pleiades to the five islands of Atlantis where they settled. Hermes took his tribe to Hawaii and became Kahunas, who remembered the most powerful form of prayer, the Huna prayer. They also brought the powerful dolphin link with them. The tribe of Zeus went to Tibet, that brought with them the qualities of stillness, peace and harmlessness to all creatures and developed it into the Buddhist religion. Aphrodite originated from Venus and she led her tribe to South America. They became the Mayans, famed for the knowledge of astronomy and mathematics, which gave us the Mayan calendar and the placing and buildings of pyramids aligned to the stars. Apollo's tribe gave us irrigation. The tribe of Poseidon went to Greece. 
They carry with them the information about the navigation of the planet by using the stars, tides and winds. They were great scholars and the library of Carthage contained sailor charts in which a continent was depicted there where the Atlantic Ocean now lies. They helped the people to develop medicine and healing. Lastly, Hera's tribe went to New Zealand and became the Maori who were the mystics and shamans. They taught the people sacred chants, singing and the art of storytelling as well as unique farming knowledge. The angels of Atlantis are now looking for people who are pure enough and prepared to commit themselves to take some of the wisdom from them and start to spread it on earth. This will help to bring back the energy of pure Atlantis. As always, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more content. Have a good day!